Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm Johnny Levi. You've been hanging out with us as I do hair. It's been a lot of fun. As you know, I own a salon, and so I thought I would show you some of my favorite hobbies. It is Valentine's Day, which is amazing. I am shooting a brand new YouTube episode, and instead of focusing on hair, I get to focus on a hobby. And I can't wait to share this hobby with all of you. I want you to subscribe and like this channel and this episode, but also know that this isn't just for the hairstylist, this is for everyone at home. One of the things that brings me great joy is nature. I have grown up in the Pacific Northwest my entire life, and I've been so very in love with the forests of Washington State. So today I get to share one of my great joys, which is my care and love for plants. I live on a five acres in the middle of the forest in a cabin in the woods and there is a lot of debris and moss that falls from the trees. Today we're going to make the most of that debris by creating beautiful custom vivariums that are both covered or uncovered. Let's go! As a first time business owner, I'm always looking for something new and exciting to put into the hair salon and this suits the energy and the vibe of my salon very well. I came across this book called Mini Scapes that is by Clea Cregan um, and I'm going to use this as my landscape or guide to teach you all about these mini vivariums that we're going to create. Mini Scapes. It's so cute. It's just such a cute book. I can't wait to share all of it with you. I found it. I'm excited about it. I can't wait to share how this all went down. Um, let's go. I've always loved the way that miniscapes or little vivariums look. And once you get to know me, you're going to know that I spend a lot of times decorating the insides of my reptile homes. Um, that's one of my other hobbies, which we'll get into at another point. So when I ran across this book, Miniscapes, I was really, really motivated to start to create something. Clea Cregan is the writer and author of this book. It's going to give you in detail and step by step needs like what you'll need for the different layers as you create your vivarium. The first step is to go find the glass vivariums or cases that you want to use. You can get anything from any thrift store and they range from $2 to about $12, not very expensive. I was able to find open um, jars like this one which will be used for more of a desert landscape. And then I was able to find some jars that have wooden lids, which we'll get into how to decorate or make these look good. Right now, I don't really like the orange and we'll plant something in here. Uh, as a business owner, I'm always looking to save money as I go into investing into a project. Even though this is for fun and this is for creativity, I'm going to sell these at my salon. So that I want them to look good and be functional and I want everybody here to be able to uh, go home and make these. All right, everybody, step two, three, and four are up next. And I got all of the jars you could possibly imagine. I have a lot of them and I want to get all of them done today. So let's get started. The first step after your stones, don't forget the rocks. So I guess the first step is get the jars. The second step is to get your stones. According to the book, you can go outside for stones or you can get something that's more decorative like the white ones. Then we're gonna get sphagnum moss. I missed the jar. <laughs> and put a small layer of that in. Um, I like to use, I like to use a little bit of water to get the moss wet. Let's see if this works out. Hold on, that's better. And if you can see closely, you'll see, I'm just going to press that nicely and 
firmly into the rocks until it starts to settle. All right, do you have a good visual? Does everybody see the moss and then the rock? Let's do it one more time with this mini scape. This is so cute. It's got the best little lid on it. Do you see that? So it'll be a nice glass piece, very easy to use. I want um, not too much moss to take up a lot of space. Also, I should say that the book the book did say that the sphagnum moss is optional. It's kind of used as a divider between the rocks and the soil that you'll be putting in. There is one secret ingredient I can't wait to share with you. I found very interesting. This jar is a lot taller, as you can see, and because I got it at thrift store it does have this glitter glued to the lower half of the jar I didn't mind it so much but you can't see the stones that are inside um, so I'm not gonna be afraid to layer this one a bit more than the others because of the height of the jar these three jars are really 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 cute they're also very small and I have these cute lids that I decided to paint three different colors that go on the jars. So I'm going to make my mini scape out of these three from scratch. I'm going to start with some stone as we talked about already. This is just a little decorative white rock. I think I'm going to run into some issues trying to do this without um, tongs, but I'll be just fine. <laughs> so this is the sphagnum moss once again, just to reiterate that this gives a little barrier between the stone and the soil. And I think the best tool I can come up with to compress that is this painter's palette. and water. When you're using water, don't overdo it. You don't want to um, soak these things so that they're, you know, what am I trying to say? Super, super, super wet. Step 17. I really don't pay attention to the numbers anymore. Don't worry about it. The moss is in, the rocks are in. I'm very excited to share the next step this book is full of information and i am so excited when i opened it up to the layers section i learned about horticultural charcoal which is something that i had not learned about before charcoal activated charcoal is something that removes toxins from our system if we need it and charcoal will remove any of the toxins or waste from your vivarium as it starts to grow. This is very valuable in the vivariums that have lids that are going to be permanently sealed. If you're using a vivarium that's open, you might not need as much of this, um, but it is great. It says, the third layer is for horticultural charcoal, which keeps the soil fresh and odor free. This is the secret ingredient to terrarium to 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 terrarium terrarium gardening uh, <laughs> you can find it in garden centers or even aquarium supply stores so i have horticultural charcoal i have horticultural charcoal here i'm just going to be sprinkling a light layer over the sphagnum moss and just below the last layer which is soil before we get to plants and the plants are really fun so let's skip ahead with your taller skinnier vases shake out the charcoal a little bit so it spreads that looks good to me and if you can get your hand into your vase you can just pat it around that way okay 
So let's get the next step, which is our soil, and then we're gonna start to show you what kind of plants go in these and how to seal all of the tops of all of the jars if you do 44 jars like I do. There are three types of glass vases that I've used and three types of vivariums that are getting created here. Terrariums, vivariums, I think vivariums have animals in them, which is why I keep saying that. Terrariums are plants only, whatever. Um, over here we have open vases, so there is no lid. I'm going to put succulents and arid or lightly tropical plants in here so that the moisture that evaporates from the open lid isn't negatively affecting the plant. In the glass lids and the wooden lids, we can put any foresty, dense tropical moss, um, this is a lichen and in Washington we do grow on the sticks in the forest all these beautiful beautiful little creatures of growth life and beauty right so if this is inside one of our enclosed vivariums which is a higher moisture level they're going to do really really well just like the Washington State forests here let's do it the first thing that we need is soil so let's start to fill each of our vivariums with about an inch to two inches of soil. It's better if you make a mess. It really is. Great. See, lots of soil. <laughs> then I'm just going to compress all of that soil down. And it's all set for plants. So let's do that 35 more times, all right? All right, this is the best part. You can see each layer in these glass terrariums. I've got the rock, the moss, the charcoal, and now my soil, and I can start to add plants. This is a very simple mini scape. You can do whatever you want to enhance these. For now, I'm going to start with a really nice sheet of moss. You can see all of the life and moisture in this beautiful piece of moss and then it was attached attached <laughs> shit <laughs> oh i said a swear word it was attached it was attached to a tree branch that fell in our forest which i can't wait to show all of you so i'm gonna use a small um, piece of the moss i don't want to overwhelm how much there is in here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and lower it into my little terrarium and you can see right away the beauty and the greenery that comes to life in here. I have one more little tiny trick and when I say tiny, I actually mean minuscule. Let me show you. This is white clover seed. White clover seed is a TikTok trend or clover lawns are huge right now on TikTok. They're mowable, you can walk on clover, and it's really, really good with very dehydrated, low um, moisture soil or lots and lots of rain. And I don't want to overdo how many clovers I put in each little terrarium. I can't even open it. Let's try this. Okay, that's better. All right. I mean, you can't even see it, but there's like four or five seeds in here. And I'm just going to sprinkle a couple of them so that in about three weeks we see clovers start to grow in here. And then we're going to seal it. These three vases are going to remain open air. So I'm going to put succulents that can handle high light. I'm going to put plants that don't need as much moisture content as the other ones. And let's just show you there's soil in all three. You can see a cute little plant right here. And I have, oh, this is actually, this is actually really cool over the last few weeks. I have been collecting little parts of succulents in this to-go container. I know, it was probably Thai food. And so in here we have baby succulents that have now developed little bits of root. 
and we're going to put these in the open air containers right here so that they are able to continue to grow. Yep, I can see just a little bit of root on the very end of this. And so in order to best care for my succulent, I'm going to choose to spritz it just a little because it's been in that container for a few weeks. I'm going to check its root system and then I'm able to go ahead and just poke a little finger in the soil at any place and place my new beautiful succulent so it can continue to grow right in here. Now, um, after you get your plants is when we'll in is when we start to really decorate these things. Notice this container is a lot deeper so I can use um, a big plant that would take up a lot of the space in here which would be really cool. Let's just check that option out in a minute. It's also something that's going to add a lot of ambience to my salon. It's a very small detail so people that are coming to get a service while their hair color is processing will be able to spend time looking at all of the beautiful details that each one of these brings into the space that you have whether it's your home or business. So this came from a group of succulents that I got as a gift and after the um, container has overgrown unfortunately so I've just removed it from that gift and now I'm going to put it in the tall thin container. First I'm going to dig a little bit of a hole. It doesn't need a lot. Its root structure doesn't go very deep. We also don't want to soak it so the um, soil in here isn't really really high the last thing is i have to be very delicate as i put it into the container so i'm going to squeeze these leaves together hopefully it works out okay and just let it fall beautiful now that it's in there i can place it nicely with its roots in the center and let's focus on just this vase for just now I really like the way that looks and the shape is nice. It does feel a little bit wobbly so I can continue to press it. The soil inward toward the root. And then the last step for this is actually just super, super easy. I got play sand from um, my, I have a pet turtle so I get sand for the turtle all the time for the base of its aquarium. So this sand can just be lightly drizzled, if you will, around the succulent. And I'm not afraid to pour a little extra in there, which you might be able to see. There's a pile here now, but there's none over here. So with the help of a paintbrush, I can just move my final layer of my terrarium, shaking my plant just a little bit to get the sand off of its leaves. There is your first succulent based terrarium with the open lid. I hope you love it. I think it's beautiful. This is going to look really good in a very bright room. Don't forget succulents need about six to eight hours of sunlight. Um, other than that, I think that this is really beautiful. I can't wait to price it, which probably is going to sell for about $10. Not a big deal but I want somebody to be able to take this beautiful piece home and love it and cherish it forever. Let's keep going. I'm gonna finish my succulent based faces now and then we'll talk more about our temperate climate forest um, and closed lid terrariums next. Because this is such a simple terrarium, I'm going to also add a little bit of my string of pearls here and I'll just wrap it around the plants so that they can grow right around the edge of that, which I think is really, really cute. The next set of avariums have glass lids or metal lids. These are all just completely shut, which means that whatever moisture you have inside is going to create condensation on the edges of this beautiful glass vase and then there will be forever a rainforest inside your vivarium or terrarium whatever you want to call it 
You already know all the steps of the foundation. So we've got rocks, we've got moss, we've got charcoal, now we have soil. Make sure that you don't put so much of everything like this that you can't put a plant in there. We'll just balance that out. I'm going to compress everything as much as possible just to see how much space I'm going to have. I love this little tiny jar. It is so cute. So in here, I don't have a lot of room, but I do have the beautiful moss that we found in the forest. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. I think that's a really beautiful piece. Look at that. It's just amazing how this is so dense right through here. And then it has all these longer pieces that are reaching out. So that piece feels like it might be not the right one. I don't know. I'm picky. Here we go. Does everybody see that? It's a really beautiful piece. It's got moss and a little um, lichen, I believe, and it's all on a stick already. And all I'm going to do is set that one piece into this jar and you can see just how remarkable that's going to look. And because of the jar's height, I'm not going to put anything besides moss in here. All right, we have the moss and about three squirts of water. And we have now officially sealed off our beautiful jar. You can't see every detail, which I do take into consideration. So I might remove some soil. But, you know, take that, uh, take that for what it is. So cute. Okay, for these three jars, I'm going to put in moss, which you've already seen that I'm very in love with. It's like unbelievable. Look at that. I think that's done already. It doesn't need to be any more than that. But if you get the opportunity to put a few beautiful sticks in there, like this, you should do it. Mm -hmm. Alright, I think that's showing you all enough of what I can do. I mean, if I want to bring out my hot glue gun and make little statues with my rocks and stuff, I can. I do like the idea of having um, a little tall jar, maybe like th this one, where I can put a very um, longer stick. Let's see. That's a lot. That's a lot of breaking. All right. I think that's so cool. And then, I don't know why, but once again with the pearls, <laughs> you know, you can actually just maybe hang it. Yeah. In this scenario, I'm going to use this as the front of my vivarium, the moss is in the back, and I'm going to sprinkle about 10 clover seeds right there in the front and just press them into the soil so that they start to grow. And then in about four or five days, you're going to see just sprouts right here, which will be really, really cute. I just hope everyone can see these. They are so cute. So when I was at the thrift store, the three of these are probably for, I don't know, sugar or noodles or something in the kitchen. And these jars um, have lids that are made of wood and there's a rubber seal that has to be older than I am here. But I painted the top with some nice acrylic paint. And as you can see, the three of them go beautifully together. Two of them are finished and you can just see like paired side by side. It's really, really cute in the kitchen or on a windowsill. Um, I guess that just means when you're out there at the thrift stores, look for unique in, and beautiful vases that aren't stereotypical to what you would typically see. 
obviously use your own aesthetic. I'm kind of quirky and I like like crafty stuff. So this to me is really adorable. I don't know about you, but I like it. Let's do this last one. Get a little bit more mossy moss. And everyone loves a good stick, so don't forget to put a stick in there. And boom, sealed, done. Like I said, this one has that frosted glass on the bottom. I think it's adorable. I'm gonna put just a little bit of moss in this one and I'm going to overdo it with the clover seeds because I really just think that this vivarium in particular is gonna be really, 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 really cute. We're gonna get uh, mussels one day. All of the branches in the world, just put them in there. Look how cute this one is, it has everything on it and it's a little dry, so I know that these guys need that moisture content. I'm gonna put that in there. Just bend the branch and let the lichens. Can everyone see how cute this is? Okay, and then the last step for this big final thing is water. One, two, three, and four. That's all you'll probably need before you seal it. And the cycle of life begins. We're gonna see condensation, evaporation, and then moisture recycling so that the moss stays alive forever. All right, the coolest thing in the world is doing this project. It's a lot of fun for me. It reminds me of being a child in Washington State. I grew up across the street from a swamp where we caught frogs and tadpoles and I wasn't afraid to get dirty. So playing with plants makes me a happy person. Um, the last three pieces are unique to say the least. And so I wanted to share with everybody how I treat the top of the lids if what I find at the thrift store is really weird. What am I trying to say? Well, this particular glass is freaking beautiful. I love the shape and I love the color. However, the color, it's clear, but I still love the color. All right, the thing that this came with, however, is this lid. I can't begin to explain to you why we have a pasta filled lid with an eggplant on the top. And I can guarantee that this lid was made before emojis were. So the eggplant is not what you think it is. Yeah. How do I get rid of this? Or do I honor it and paint it and then just have it be the lid of this terrarium? I really do want your comments. Please comment below. Do I paint the lid? Do I cover the lid? What do you want me to do with this lid? Because I don't know what to do with this lid yet, I will show you what I did with other lids that were also awkward. This lid is really unique. It was a mason jar lid that I put a styrofoam half circle on or dome with hot glue. And then I used some um, trim from some of the costumes I've made for the coverage. So it's a little bit weird and quirky, but what I decided to do is put a picture of my partner and I on it and some reminders or notes that I want to take. I will put on this as a desk decoration in my office. I hope you like that idea. I think it's super cute. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. I am not a big fan of what I did to this lid. Although I painted these and they turned out very cute, I don't like this. Orange is my favorite color, but I don't like this. So I'm going to show everyone how I use hot glue gun and my fabric and batting to create a cute pin cushion for this lid instead of having it just be orange and wood. The first step is to cut out your fabric. Let's start with that. I'm going to take my lid and lay it face down on the fabric and then I can cut out any excess that I might need 
Right now I'm doing this in a little bit of a hasty fashion, so don't judge my table's cleanliness. Okay, I just need enough fabric to wrap around the entire dome of the lid. So you can see the shape of the fabric and the shape of the batting are similar to the shape of my lid. And if I was covering the eggplant lid, I would probably put three to four layers of batting over this before. I might even put a little bit of loose cotton for pillow stuffing over this and then the batting so that I get a nice soft shape and that this disappears. Now, I did try to get this off of the cork and there's no way that's happening. So it's either painting it or covering it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is use my batting and just wrap it around with the hot glue gun. So here's the hot glue. Just through the center first. Beautiful, it's like an art piece that I never thought I was gonna do. Shake off any of the dirt from the table and then just press the batting onto the lid. Then I'm gonna flip my batting over, the top is glued down. I'm going to start to put my hot glue around the edges of that lid. And you can see I'm kind of sloppy about it, but what am I not gonna do? Touch the glue with my fingers. I think it's the biggest mistake everybody at home makes all the time. So I'm going to use my plastic painter's um, spatula and just fold the edges when the glue is still hot. This is what you do when you grow up a little Mormon kid. You just learn how to craft everything. And oh boy, do I have stories to share about that, but we'll get there another day, everyone. All right, we got that all settled. I can use just a little bit more glue right on the edges. And once again, safely wrapping it around the edge with my plastic spatula. And now I can cut the excess batting off, as you can see. It's really up to you as well. How much do you want to add for cushion? Um, I'm doing one layer now, but I could do up to three or four. And that would make it a really nice soft all right, now just repeat the same process, but this time do it with the fabric that you chose. I chose a four-way stretch. I don't know what I'm doing there. Don't worry about that. I just wanted to push the glue in with my chin. Saturate your batting with your very hot glue from the hot glue gun. I'm unplugging that glue gun. Um, that is very hot, be careful, but just apply a very nice amount before you place your beautiful, this is a cute little crushed velvet. And then be very careful about the heat. Once again, I'm gonna use my spatula, my painter's spatula to press this into the batting. I think this is gonna be so beautiful, everybody. At this point, I'm just finalizing my project. I'm cutting all the excess material off of the lid that I've covered. I think it's um, it's got a lot of glitter flying through the air. This fabric is very cute. And that is how you do it. It's very cute, very simple. And now I can put this on top of the jar that it's meant to go on and we have a really adorable 
custom terrarium for one of your dear friends or family members. Whether it is wood or glass or fabric, these lids give you options and give you a little bit of variety. I'm excited to price these pieces out. They're not going to be very expensive. I want them to go to good homes where they can enhance somebody's day-to-day -day life, whether it's their desk, their bathroom, or their kitchen. And I hope that all of you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to this channel. I really love sharing my hobbies and hair expertise with all of you. So I'll see you next time.